So far, can be cheated. It's unreliable. It, if uh, uh, this is about acquisition, so if we uh, if we try to use software, <coughs> the problem is that if we have a, if we have a, oh, I didn't mention it, but if we install, uh, for example, a good uh, rootkit, then uh, a lot of software can be fooled. And we can think that we do something that we can fool. <coughs> and we get completely the wrong data. The problem is that for the acquisition, if we do it by software, we kind of have to run the software on the target system. And it's exactly what we said. Right? Uh, one of the points that we noticed, uh, that we mentioned, was, uh, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's not mentioned here, but if you put it in, if you, if you load the software, you, you put it in the memory. And by placing your software in the memory, you are altering the evidence. I mean, you have the evidence, there it is, no touchy touchy, and then uh, I want to have it. But to get it, I need to alter it. There is, if I do it in software, if I do it by software, I, uh, I have to load it into uh, the memory. So, uh, software can be cheated, it's therefore unreliable. Uh, software based violates the forensic principle uh, because it alters evidence. Hardware based is hard to fool, so it's more reliable. We will see that it, even hardware systems uh, can be uh, fooled. So, uh, even there, we can have the uh, same problem as with the software. Hardware based typically does not alter the evidence in a uh, tense, but uh, if, you, uh, if you use a, a bus, uh, like the firewire, Jan already mentioned it, if you use the firewire <coughs> bus, for example, then uh, you don't uh, install the software uh, in the memory, so you don't touch it. But there we have it. So it was only a few slides away, but you were ahead two slides with your command. Uh, Cash remark. And that brings us to race conditions. There are all sorts of uh, uh, inconsistencies. Also, also, if we do it by uh, hardware. Well, let's have a look at, uh, at the hardware. Let's, if, uh, let's first have a look at the hardware. Why? What are the problems with the hardware? This is uh, one of the very uh, uh, early uh, CPUs, huh? the 1886. I have had one. Ooh. I was getting so old because I don't think that any of you will ever uh, have used the system with the 1886. Uh, but I have, I remember, I'm so happy with it. It was my one, two, third computer. My first one was a 6502. And that was, oh, that was so fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Uh, very simple. But anyway, uh, why is this interesting? It's interesting to have a good look at the interface of this uh, chip. Yeah. If I could have taken an uh, i7 or an uh, Optron or whatever, it doesn't matter. Their fundamental, their, their uh, the basic design is all the same. That they uh, they have some uh, electronics uh, to make it very simple. That's some electronics, and uh, they have uh, connections to the outside uh, world. Uh, we see these are uh, connections uh, to which these uh, pins are connected. So this, this, this chip, of course, is very small and it's somewhere in there. And uh, there's uh, wires from here to uh, all these uh, pins. And these pins are interesting because you can have more. What kind of pins are these? Because we see uh, here all sorts of uh, MNMX, RD, RQ, GTO, RQ, GT1, log S2, S1, S0, test, ready, reset. My, my, my. Uh, and I see a second set of uh, hold and uh, write and uh, MIO. What, what is this? What, what are these pins? What do they do? What's the purpose of these pins? What does the electronics of in here do with these things? Any idea? There's three groups of pins. 
That's a, that's a hint. These pins, look at the, for, let, see here, I see a right and I see a reach for a, a ring. So I see a right and a ring. What do you think these two these signals? It's, a, it's electricity, no? This is either uh, a five volt, this is a five volt electronic, a five volt or a zero volt. That's the only, it's digital. Five, so, uh, what happens if I put five volt on this line? Five volts of electricity. Any idea? Oh. This is the, this is what they call the control bus. So with these pins, the CPU communicates with the motherboard. It, it tells the motherboard what it wants to do. Uh, for example, the read pin tells the motherboard it wants to read typically the data from the memory, uh, it wants to read from the I.O. How does it how does the motherboard know what it wants to read? Memory or I.O.? That's another pin. See? For example, here, memory or I.O. And this means that if it is five volt on this pin, I want to read from the memory. If I have zero volt on this pin, I want to read from the I.O. It's unbelievable. And the motherboard has a switching electronics and it automatically switches all the lines to the right connection. Then I see a lot of A ports. A, 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 zero, A, one, A, two, A, what's this? Where do these things go? What they, what's their purpose? How many are there? Very good, yeah. <laughs> these are the memory bus, uh, the address bus, sorry, the ad 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 address bus. So here is the, the digital uh, code, huh? the, the digital number for the address I want to, for example, read. <coughs> or maybe I want to write to that address. So here, because this chip is very dumb, as are most IC, most uh, CPUs. Most CPUs can only think in words, what they call a word. And it means that uh, in this case, uh, that is uh, 60. So we have the D0, the D1, the D2, the D3, the D4, the D5, the D6. These, the D bits, it, 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 it says AD, that means it has a double function. At one point in time, it means it is A1, and then it, there's a next moment in time, and it becomes D1. So it switches back and forth. Why do they do that? Because otherwise I would be way more big. And maybe that doesn't fit in my package, or it doesn't fit here uh, in my wiring. So then I share uh, the bits. The, that modern computers have uh, a different pin layout. Huh? They have these hundreds of pins at the back, and they uh, so they are able to, to make. They don't have to do this anymore because you lose time. Now because this one, this chip can either tell the motherboard where it wants to read, or it can actually read. But it cannot do those things at the same moment in time. It has to be, so you lose time. Well, uh, the data is the, is, is the so-called data bus, and the word size is uh, 16, uh, D0 to uh, D15. And the address size is A0 to A19, so that is 20 uh, bits, <coughs> which comes to 1 uh, megabyte of uh, RAM. It can address 1 megabyte of, uh, of 16 bit words. But they didn't use that. They went for backwards compatibility and they choose to go for steps of uh, half a word, of a byte, because uh, that's, that's, that's a choice they made. So, in theory, they could have addressed 2 megabyte of, uh, of RAM had they gone with the with, with word size of 16. With the, in blocks of 16. They could have done that. They didn't do that. They have overlapping uh, words. So every byte by an Intel processor or an Intel copy, a clone or an AMD, 
can read the same byte, uh, in this case, twice. If you have a 64-bit machine, it can read it even way more often. Uh, there's a lot of addresses that all look at exactly the same spot in them. It's kind of a waste of, uh, of address. But that's the trick. So we only have three sets of pins. We have the, 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 com the compound pins, we have the address pins, which tell the, the, the motherboard where I want to read or where I want to write, and we have the, the data pins, which tell the motherboard what we want to write where, or when the motherboard can provide us with the data <coughs> that is in that location. So what happens uh, if it wants to read from the RAM, it becomes interesting. I think it's interesting. I should decide for you. I think it's interesting. If it wants to write, for example, from uh, memory location uh, 1000, it will put 1000 in binary code on these uh, address bits, and it will put read, huh? You said we want to read from address 1000. We put the digital, the binary code for 1000 here on these pins, the address bits. We take the power from this line, so we set it to zero volt. Uh, we do that by, by grounding it, by short wiring it to the ground. So we know that all the power is gone uh, internally. And by doing that, the, the motherboard knows that we want to read from that memory location. Then it will, it will do the, the magic in logic, and it will connect these data pins, which are in this case the same, these data pins to the RAM location, 1000, and then the next moment in time, the, uh, the, the, the CPU can see the binary code that is in memory location 1000 on these pins, plus 5 or 0 and 4. That is how it works. And that's all that's, that's, that, that there's to it. Um, so the CPU, it's, uh, I, there used to be a table and everything for me to point, but uh, uh, maybe I think no, I cannot use a mouse. Uh, there, all the way at the top, there are three uh, registers that registered inside the, the CPU that connect to these pins. There is a register for the address bus, there is a register for the data bus, and there's a register for the well, there's, there's not a register for the couple things that does the, the logic uh, inside. So, uh, uh, but of course, on the on the picture there, you can see there's also a connection with the uh, control bus. And it's all controlled <coughs> by most CPUs with the uh, microcode. If we look at uh, the motherboard, this is all motherboard. I know. I mean, uh, for me it's a uh, wow. I, mean, uh, I, I started out with uh, much simpler crap, but uh, for you I know it's, uh, it's old stuff. But it is interesting to see. Because this is where the CPU goes. I you see that this is a much more modern CPU with much more uh, pin layout, but the, uh, even today, even the i7 has only three buses. It has a, an address bus, a data bus, and a control bus. That's all there is to it. And all these pins are either one of these three groups. Uh, let's have a look. We see a chip here with a, with a heat sink on it, and it is called the North Bridge. So it's a bridge. What does that do? It's a bridge, not like we have a network. What does it do? What's the purpose? Does anyone know? Or uh, anyone wants to take a guess? <coughs> yes? Well, interconnecting memory solidation. Very good, yeah. It interconnects. Uh, this, this, is the logic. <coughs> this is the logic that connects the address bus and the data bus to either the RAM and uh, the video card and the sound bridge, which is over there. That's another logic board. These two chips are basically your whole motherboard. All the other stuff is only for uh, for show, more or less. Uh, the other, uh, uh, audio, the uh, These two chips, that's why if you buy a motherboard, that's the thing that they put on the box. They say, we use the chipset 
and then they can use the, the, the NVIDIA chipset or whatever. And if they talk about the chipset of your motherboard, they talk about these two chips. And they are very important because these two chips, they make the speed. The reason that consoles like the PlayStation are so incredibly fast is because they use a custom design uh, North Bridge and South Bridge, which are much faster than, uh, than these products. But they're custom designed, so they cannot do a lot of other things, but they're just designed for games. Yes? But, but nowadays you have this uh, i7 uh, CPU, yeah. which also includes <coughs> part of the North Bridge uh, yes. for, for example, uh, accessing the, the memory. Yes. It's not in the North Bridge anymore, but it is in the CPU. Exactly. But uh, uh, that is why I took this picture. The functionality is still there, they just moved it to the chip, exactly for the same reason that, uh, for example, uh, Sony uh, custom designs their, their chips, uh, because it makes it fast. The, the longer these wires are, and this, this is the whole reason that, this, this, that these three components are so close together, because the longer these wires are, the slower they get. It's the same as ADSL uh, at home with your internet. The longer you live from the, from the switch, the, the slower your internet is. And it is the same with this thing. So this is why it's all as close as they can uh, put it. And if you can put this in here, uh, more speed. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. so they will always try to make that slower or more compact. Uh, then there are lines to that chip, and that's slow stuff. Uh, that's uh, audio cards and uh, keyboards and and that's for the computer that is really oh, that so uh, it doesn't need a heat sink and uh, um, okay well for us that is important because if we look at the structure of uh, the motherboard we want to get access to the RAM memory and that's the whole exercise because maybe you are like hey whoa I, I walked into the wrong cluster to the architecture no uh, the problem is that this is our target uh, this is what we want. And what we see is uh, that it is connected to the North Bridge. Whether it is in the CPU package or not, the, it is even in the i7, it is still a separate unit uh, on the chip. They, they just moved part of the uh, logic onto the die of the CPU. But you still have a memory controller hub. Huh? And uh, if we want to get to it, we need to go through the bridge. You can see the picture, it is uh, practically impossible to, uh, to act. This is a multi-layer print. Huh? So maybe you were thinking, oh, we can flip the board and we can connect to the pins at the bottom. It doesn't work, it's a multi-layer print. So uh, a lot of pins of these connectors are inside the print. So we cannot, there's no way to get to them. Uh, so the only way to get to them it's through the bridge, but it's a bridge, and that's that's a thing. Uh, so we can access through here and round to there, or we can go like this and get to there, or uh, we can go uh, from here huh? and go through this bridge, through this bridge, and through that bridge. Uh, the reason that uh, uh, these are so fast, uh, the, the PCI Express, is because we use uh, parallel uh, lines. Uh, we use uh, the, the fast PCI Express lanes. The, 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 the PCI Express is this. This is one <coughs> PCI Express connection. And if you have a larger socket, it is only just multiples of PCI. It's like, like, like uh, if you have the old system, if you use a lot of slots at the same time. Right? So you can, uh, you can get uh, more uh, speed. And, uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's just more than uh, one uh, channel. That's the uh, trick. You get more speed. Well, uh, carrier and grant, you can find more details also in the, uh, in the paper mentioned before. They wrote a paper, a hard based memory acquisition procedure for digital investigations. And they uh, had a look at the <coughs> candy cat. The, uh, the information uh, through the bridge. And so let's get to the bridge. Huh? Let's see if we can get it. So this was the idea. 
Uh, in this case, uh, it is your example. They use the, an AMD system, and the AMD system has parts of the bridge inside the CPU package, like with the i7. But the functionality is still the same, whether it's uh, a separate unit on the motherboard or it's included in the CPU, it's just uh, the bridging uh, uh, hardware. And uh, there, uh, they tried to uh, access the RAM uh, through the south bridge, um, and then uh, it goes over the uh, PCI Express, in, in their case, to the, uh, to, the, to the north bridge, then the host bridge, and then trying to get it, trying to get it into the red. Uh, or, uh, that is uh, what uh, Jaco and the, uh, told us, had, or we can go uh, through FireWire. Uh, the FireWire hooks up here, and <coughs> then basically follows the same path. So there you see how powerful FireWire is. Huh? I have two. It's a, it's a direct hardware bus. But for me, it's even more dangerous because I, I think I have more uh, hardware buses. Um, more research, it's in later slides, has shown that it doesn't matter. As long as you are on a hardware bus, this is possible. So this is very interesting. Um, however, the switch is programmable. So they were able to reprogram the switch to reroute the traffic. Uh, because it's programmable. The switch is, uh, you, can, you can, to make it faster, to make it more efficient, you already, you see, you can manipulate the switch for a, a, a direct memory access, right? and it can map blocks for, for example, video memory and stuff, and move that around, so that at some moments you have more video memory, and in other moments you have less video memory. A shared video memory, we all know this principle, in shared video memory, a part of your RAM is hijacked for your video card. And it could be done by just rerouting the, the traffic in the switch so that it thinks that that part of the RAM is for the video card and the other part of the RAM is actually red. That's all a, a, a trick. Uh, what you see here, reprogramming of the memory controller results in a hang of the system. So uh, what they did is they, uh, they, they, the first try that they did was manipulate the the, the tables, the translation tables in that switch and they uh, effectively blocked this attack. Well, just this first one is enough. Huh? If, uh, if you are a robot M and uh, you are computer literate, you're not a computer expert, but you have a tool or you have access to a tool that blocks uh, traffic from your I.O. to the specific part of memory where, for example, the encryption keys are of the encrypted keys are from uh, a true print, then you cannot get them over the hardware bus. If you try, the whole system freezes. So that's uh, uh, yeah, that's that's too bad, huh? Uh, but you can make it even worse. They went even further. Yeah. yeah? Don't use hardware, if you don't use a hardware attack 
if you want to use it, uh, if you want to use that word. If you, uh, if you use uh, the normal software, then we don't have this problem. Because the, the software can still access the RAM. But now we specifically look at the hardware methods of, of getting the RAM, and they proved, with this proof of concept, that it is possible to block uh, hardware access to the memory, or uh, parts of the memory. He was first, then I'll come back to you. This, uh, this run that will is it in the cache of the of your CPU or your... No, that's the switch. The switch, it's, it's, uh, don't think about it that it's, it's big or something. It's, uh, it's, you can read the paper, it's very interesting. Uh, but in the, uh, in the switch, inside the hardware of the switch, are uh, tables, mapping tables, to map blocks to other blocks of... Uh, because it's a custom design piece of hardware. Huh? And it's, it's very powerful. Yeah. It can make your system very uh, uh, fast, and uh, that's the reason they, they make these things programmable, and uh, that you can change it. Uh, but it's, it's very comparable to uh, registers in a CPU. But uh, it's a different. It's, it's, a, it's not a CPU. It's, a, it's just a, a switch, a hardware switch. And, um, it's very much like a network switch, which has uh, tables for the, the, the MAC addresses, huh? for where which port has which MAC address. Kind of similar to that. It's inside the switch. Uh, what, what I was wondering, um, if there is some, some kind of table in your uh, in your North Bridge or whatever it is, uh, can you first read that table before you? Not from here. That's the problem. You can only access it through the CPU. So that's the, of course you can do it, but in order to read it, you need to start a software on the system, and the whole point of the hardware attack, or the hardware capture, or whatever you want to call it, is that you don't need to run any software on the system. So this, it, this is all, like I said, like I started before, I'm, I'm, I'm not intending it to uh, annoy you or anything, but I just want to make clear again that uh, uh, all, there's, a, there's been a lot of research in this field, and uh, <coughs> they haven't come up with the perfect solution yet. And uh, research like this shows that uh, it is possible uh, to block this kind of uh, capture. Of course, Robert M. did not have this, and most people don't have this. I, I don't think that anyone has this protection on his system, uh, any Robert M. or who else has this protection on his system. But that's only a matter of time. Uh, if, if there's a lot of bad people out there, and like I said, they are very literate. Uh, so if, if, if these things are possible, they figure it out, and they get tools to block it. It will be as easy as a, as a bootable program that as soon as you start your system, you block your hardware attack, and uh, yeah, and, and then it's kind of safe for this uh, for this capture. <coughs> if you don't want people to capture your RAM, then yeah. Yes. So if I block the DNA, uh, Firewire basically becomes unusable. Yes. If I do the same thing with my PCI. With PCI, what do you mean? PCI Express Bus? Uh, yeah, well, it, it basically blocks everything going through from from uh, from the from the bus, from the outside bus. Yeah? But how do you do it on, on a specific bus level? So, for example, uh, could you go for that quick? Oh, sure. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. this one? Yeah. Uh, if I now block for uh, 3094, uh, then my firewire is dead, but the rest could zero degrees still no. access. No, the, the way it works is that uh, the blocking is from here. The, the, you don't route this traffic, uh, th that's what you do in the switch, you block the routing from this, uh, from, from, the, from, the, from the external port uh, to a certain area in the RAM. So I have in the RAM, I have a certain part of, of memory that I don't want to have, to have access, uh, I want to prevent access from outside the CPU, anyone else but the CPU may, uh, may enter this uh, part of the, the RAM, and that switching I, I block uh, here. So it doesn't matter whether it comes from here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. It doesn't matter. They all come from external sources, and they won't come through. Shit. Yeah, I, I thought you were blocking the whole uh, memory access, and that would have been kind of problematic if you do that for everything. Yes. But you can do it for a part of the yes. memory that is in the central. And that's exactly what they proved. Yeah. So this is uh, but they went even further, huh? 
they went even further, and what they were able to do was to reroute it back over the bus, so that uh, they were trying to read from a part in RAM, but in fact, they read memory from another card. So, uh, but you think that